ESPN 1410 Wing AM brings you 1410 Wing Live. Follow along on Facebook, on Twitter, even on our ESPN Dayton YouTube channel and at wingam.com. We're everywhere. The biggest interviews with the biggest local and national guests. It's 1410 Wing Live with Justin Kenner. All right, everybody, welcome in 1410 Wing Live presented by Arrowhead Tax Service with you here on this Friday morning. I hope all of you have had a great week. I'm excited to bring on our next guest, two-time NBA champion, Dayton Zone. We have Norris Cole, good enough to join us here today. Norris, welcome in, man. How are you this morning? I'm doing well this morning. Good morning. Glad for ha- Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I was excited to finally catch up with you. And by the way, I love seeing those two NBA uh, championship trophies right behind you. Uh, NBA is the topic of everything right now. So those are pretty nice right there. Hey, uh, so we were talking before we started here. Obviously, the entire sports world, not just basketball, came to a screeching halt back in March. Where are you within your professional career right now? And where were you when the when the plug was officially pulled on your season, just like everybody else's? So I was playing in the Euro Cup and in the French League. Um, the top league in France and um, for Team Monaco. And um, we were first place in our group. And so, you know, I was having a good season. Our team was having a productive season. Um, in March, though, you know, after our – we played a away game in, um, in Lyon, France. And that was the last game um, I played. It was uh, early March. And, you know, coronavirus had set in and took the world by storm. And – um. I was able to come home, which was very important for me to be able mm-hmm. to come with my family, and I've been here ever since. How often does your family get to go and watch you play uh, overseas? I know you know you won the championship in Israel a few years ago. I saw some cool pictures of you and your family celebrating there. How often does your family get to go and watch you play overseas? Um, well, my my father he comes um he when he comes he comes to stays for like two or three months at a time. Wow. Yeah, you know, my sister she's able to come around her uh her vacation schedule and my same mm-hmm. with my, you know, they have their schedules and they, they plan around their work schedules, but um, it's, it's good whenever they can come, you know, because, you know, it's a long trip sometimes, <laughs> most times it's a very, very long, uncomfortable trip, you know, so uh, whenever they come, it's, it's good. But when they don't come, you know, we use platforms like, you know, Skype, Zoom, FaceTime, <laughs> you know, and so I'm, I'm always on the phone seeing them. Yeah, but how far you are, trust me, it's not just, uh, hey, I'm going to come visit you this weekend uh, type of deal. So you got to <laughs> – all right, we got Norris Cole with us here, uh, Dayton Zone two-time NBA champion. Obviously, the, uh, the the documentary that everyone's been watching and talking about, and we're going to talk about your podcast coming up in a bit that you highlighted a lot about the, the last dance. It, it's funny watching that and you, you know, coming into the NBA back in 2011, winning a championship right off the bat. You were part of the Miami Heat with LeBron James, Chris Bosh, Dwayne Wade. They got a lot of this. You guys got a lot of the similar attention that the Bulls did in the 90s. When you're watching The Last Dance, how much could you relate to a lot of the noise surrounding the Bulls? Very similar noise that you and the Heat had uh, in the early 2010s. Yeah, it, I can definitely relate. I can definitely relate. Um, there were some differences because obviously they didn't have social media back then. So, you know, whenever they had a chance to see, you know, MJ and Scottie Pippen and all the, all the other guys. Dennis Rodman and those guys, you know, it was a really, really, really big deal because there was no such thing as social media. So, you know, they kind of went crazy, even more crazy probably back then. But I could definitely relate to being able to have to have your best foot forward every game. So every time you leave the hotel, you know that the eyes are watching you to be able to, you know, be the hottest team in the world. You know, our Miami Heat team was the hottest team regardless of sport in the whole entire world. So, you know, it was, it was great to be able to watch that and um, to play with, you know, LeBron James, who's this generation's uh, best player, um, you know, comparing it back then to, you know, MJ, who, who's the greatest of all time. Um, you know, it was special to watch the documentary. Um, it brought back memories of my childhood because MJ was my favorite player growing up. He's my all-time favorite player. So to be able to watch and relive those moments again, it was it's pretty cool. You know, when you talk, when people talk about MJ versus LeBron, of course, that's where it always goes. And you had the, the luxury of playing with LeBron and you got to see it. My favorite part about the last dance really wasn't the footage of games uh, because we've seen that footage before. I, I'm obsessed with the behind the scenes footage, the, the practices. And we hear about how intense Michael was during practices. You know, LeBron gets the the label of just being too much of a fun guy at times and, and, and those types of things. 
tell us something about LeBron, like during practice, how intense was he during practice and you being a rookie coming in in 2011, did he treat rookies and the new players the way that MJ did uh, with the bulls? Well, one, I don't, I don't compare the two ever. Um, you know, MJ for me is, I don't compare anybody to MJ really. Um, mm. But for Le as far as LeBron, I think LeBron, um, I think people unfairly, you know, say things about him that they don't really know. Um, there's more than one way to get things done. LeBron doesn't do things the same way MJ does things. But LeBron has also had great results from doing things the way that he does. And I've been a recipient of some of those great things. You know, he's a, he's a fun, laid-back guy at times. He also can be intense. Now, obviously, he doesn't go to the extreme MJ goes to, but LeBron is, is an intense individual. He is a hardworking individual, and he does have a killer instinct. You know, people like to say that he doesn't, but yeah. he does. But his his killer instinct is different than MJ's killer instinct. And so, you know, I like to compare it to, um, you know, different different world analogies. And so, I compare it like to the military. You know, you have different type of warriors. You have snipers who shoot from a mile away. You have frontliners. Then you have chemists who strategically plant things. All three of them are killers, but they do it in different ways. And so, you know, LeBron, he's effective in his way of doing things, and he's very great, and he's one of the all-time greatest players to ever play the game. And MJ was very great at his method of doing things. And so I don't compare the two, but they're both are great at what they do. And LeBron, like I said, LeBron is this generation's greatest player. No doubt about that. Norris Cole with us here. Now, your story is fascinating to me. I mean, you look, you originally, you know, coming out of Dunbar, had committed to play college football, uh, and you got a late offer from Cleveland State and Gary Waters late. I, I mean, can you imagine if that if that offer doesn't come, it totally changes this whole last decade for you. Um, how tough was that? I mean, basketball is your, your passion. I, I mean, just thinking back to that, what was that moment like when you initially got that offer from Gary Waters in Cleveland State to give you the chance to pursue your basketball career? Man, believe it or not, I was I was sold on going to Walsh. I had committed to Walsh University in Canton, Ohio. Uh, I was excited about that. And then, um, you know, Coach Waters, you know, I gave him a, he, he came and we did a home visit. Um, you know, I called the coach at Walsh and said, I, I would like to take the visit. And, you know, and because my dream is to play Division One, And, you know, Coach Young and Coach Calhoun who was there at the time, who's now the head coach at Youngstown State. It's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, I called them and they respected my wishes. They understood, you know, and they wanted what was best for me. And they wanted me to be happy. And so, you know, I took the visit to Cleveland State. You know, I believed in Coach Waters and Coach G and Coach DeSimpler and Coach Kimbrough. I believed in their their, their staff and their vision. Um, I met, you know, my, my now he's my best friend in life. Uh, I met DeAndre Brown over that summer. And, um, you know, I think you know, going to Cleveland State was one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. One thing we discuss here a lot, I mean, with having, it's funny, you, know, you go play in the Horizon League. You have a Horizon League school here in Dayton and Wright State. Uh, why do you believe Wright State didn't pursue you? And, I mean, a lot of schools didn't pursue you. Was it because you maybe had a, a focus on football? I mean, why do, why do you feel a lot of schools were not giving you the, the proper attention whenever you were looking to play college basketball? I don't know, man. You had to ask them, the coaches who were there mm -hmm. at the time. You know, I was very solid academically. I qualified. I was, you know, overqualified. I was number mm -hmm. two class the salutatorian you know i passed my acts i played for a championship winning team you know i made all section all area all conference uh, first team all state tournament team you know i don't i don't know why uh <laughs> i can't tell you that um I, I didn't play a lot of aau so you know a lot of teams focused on recruiting aau and i didn't play a lot of aau because i played you know football in the summertime we had seven on seven and things of that nature but you know, I had very good seasons in high school and during the season, but you know, I don't, I don't really know. But some things, sometimes things happen for a reason. Um, God works in mysterious ways, and um, you know, I'm happy things worked out the way they did. And I, and I love Cleveland State. Oh, I love Cleveland State. Yeah, and I'm not going to put you in a position to, to say whether you would pick Wright State over Cleveland State, but would the would it intrigue you if Wright State had come to you? Would it have intrigued you enough to stay in town or even the Dayton Flyers out of the A-10? What would the – I mean, was there a party that would have loved to stay in the city and play for one of the two local teams here? Well, my, yeah, going my, growing up, my goal was either to play at Ohio State or University of Dayton. You know, I mm -hmm. always thought about, you know, playing at University of Dayton because we played there so much in high school at the arena. We mm -hmm. played – 
countless games there. It's right down the street from my high school, right around the corner from my grandparents' home. So it, it would have been nice to play at UD. Um, and my sister, she went to Wright State University. I, I went to Wright State every summer for academic camps when I was in high school, in middle school. I went from eighth grade to 10th grade. You know, I was on campus at Wright State all the time. So, you know, it would have been nice. It, it would have been nice, but, you know, it wasn't meant to be. I was still able to stay within Ohio. Um, you know, I think it was good for me to move out of Dayton, to move out of my comfort zone, to, uh, you know, grow up a little bit and, be, and become a man. And I, and, I, and I believe that, you know, going to Cleveland State was was the best thing, you know, that ever happened to me at that point in my life. Yeah, another local Dayton kid at Cleveland State, obviously, and Tory Patton. Uh, you know, the local kids within the Horizon League in general, you have obviously Amari Davis from Trotwood, just one freshman of the year there. By the way, in 2020, that kid averaged 16 points a game at Green Bay and yes. did shot four total threes. How as a guard do you sh average 16 points a game and uh, you only shoot four total threes? I mean, it's all about the three ball here in, in 2020. It's amazing. He's a fantastic player. Yeah, but the three ball is overrated. You know, people talk a lot about the threes, but basketball is a game of balance. And basketball is about putting the ball in the basket in the most efficient and effective way. In mm -hmm. the mid, alive. And that's why I love his game, because he keeps the mid-range alive. He's what I call the mid-range killer. You know, he can, he can <laughs> slap the basket. He can finish at the rim. He's great at the mid-range. And so uh, he's also great in transition. So, you know, he's a very, very talented player. He's well, well accomplished. Academically, he's very sound. At, at Trotwood, he was he had very high academic scores, and so you know I'm happy to see his results. Um, you know I, I keep up with him. Um, he he's definitely an inspiration to the next generation coming behind him, as I was an inspiration to him. And the same thing with Tory. Um, I went up to Cleveland State uh, last year, and I was able to see see Tory and visit the team. You know, and he's well on his way as well. Yeah, he had a decent season, and he's looking to grow from here. Yeah, and you have Darius Quisenberry out of Wayne, obviously playing at Youngstown State. You mentioned that earlier. Uh, I saw Carl Blanton from Trotwood. Uh, you know, he had committed to another school, I believe like a D2 school, if I'm not mistaken, in, in very similar situation. A late offer from Cleveland State comes in. I haven't, I haven't had an update on what he has decided. But Dennis Gates has done a fantastic job at Cleveland State, co-coach of the year last year. Um, you know, you played with LeBron in the NBA and Drew Joyce the third, obviously an assistant coach on that team who played with LeBron in high school. I love what they're doing in Cleveland right now with Cleveland State. Oh, man, Coach Gates, he's done a great job. He's hired mm -hmm. a great staff. Uh, me and him are in constant contact. You know, he's a, he's a leader of men, a, a leader of young men. And, um, you know, he has a great basketball pedigree coming from Chicago. Um, he was an assistant down in Florida State. Um, he also has Steve Wright, who's a local legend. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who, you know, went to Northern Kentucky, was all American, graduated from Bowling Green as well. Uh, who, who I looked up to growing up. Steve Wright was a player that I looked up to growing up when, you know, playing basketball. And he was also a quarterback at Colonel White. And so, you know, his staff that he has, that he has assembled there with Drew Joyce and the rest of the guys, man, I'm excited for Cleveland State and congratulations to Coach Gates once again. I told him once, I'm going to tell him again on being a uh, co coach of the year. Yeah, now another interesting fact too, the Horizon League, uh, you know, you were just named the Horizon League Player of the Decade. A lot of really good players over the last 10 years that have played in that conference uh, and a lot of vote. You know, there was a long process of the voting that went into that. You came away with that. Congratulations on that, by the way. But that was really cool when I saw that. You had a great college career and a great pro career, obviously, and your pro career is not done. But that's quite the accomplishment. Horizon League Player of the Decade. Man, that's pretty cool, man. I never dreamed about that when I went to Cleveland State. I <laughs> I only wanted to be the best player I could be, and I, I wanted our team to accomplish and win championships. That's all I really thought about. And then, um, you know, throughout that process, being organic, being true to the team, being true to, to, to my work ethic, you know, I was blessed to, to have this honor. I was blessed to be drafted and all of those things that came with it. But, you know, me and my family, we were talking about it. It's something that we never talked about. We never said, uh, let's, let's win, you know, player of the decade. And so... To be able to have that honor for people to appreciate my game and, and my time at the Horizon League as an ambassador um, is it, very special. And I think um, the culture that was set at Cleveland State by Gary Waters, the work ethic mm -hmm. that he instilled in me and my teammates, you know, that's definitely a major reason why I was able to, to be Horizon League Player of the Decade. At what point when you were at Cleveland State uh, did you realize, man, I – you know, for one, you've always felt you had confidence. Anyone that plays at an elite level and plays in D1, you know, always has a confidence about their game. But at what point throughout your career at uh, Cleveland State did you feel like, man, I, I have what it takes to potentially play at that next level? When did that become a reality for you? 
Um, I felt like after my sophomore season, because my freshman season was it was a rough season for me. We had a lot of success as a team, but my sophomore, um, my freshman season, I didn't play as much as I, I thought I should play. I didn't play as much as I wanted to play. And realistically, I wasn't developed, you know, physically and mentally mm-hmm. to take that next step. And so freshman year was a learning experience for me. Um, my sophomore year, I had a very successful sophomore year, and our team won the Horizon League. We went to the we went to the NCAA tournament, and we won uh, we won our first round game against Wake Forest. And after that season, you know, I, I realized that I have a chance to be special. And so my junior year, you know, our team we took sort of a step back because we lost a lot of players from the year before. But I was able to have a successful individual season, and I got invited to the Nike camp, the Darren Williams Top Ten Nike camp. And, you know, they, they said 90% of the guys that go to that camp get drafted and go to the NBA. And so when I realized that, like, dang, 90%, you know, I said, I'm here, you know, <laughs> and I don't want <laughs> other 10% not to make it. And so that, that's when I really realized, like, man, I really have a chance to make it. And then, you know, my senior season obviously was very special. Um, it was like a storybook, you know, senior season. And the way things were happening, it was just like, I would just sit back and be like, wow, I can't believe that happened tonight. And then the next night, something special happens again. Like, (laughs) I kept it to myself. I didn't say anything to anybody at the time because I was so focused and so driven. But, you know, after the fact, you know, me and my trainers, me and my coaches and my parents, we were like, wow, where did that come from? (laughs) So kidding. Yeah, it was was, was special, man. It was very, very special. But I think my after my sophomore season, I, I, I knew I had a chance. Last thing here as, as we wrap things up, and we'll talk about your podcast here in just a second. But I'm you're a, obviously you're a fan throughout your high school, college career. You're looking forward to getting to the NBA. You're drafted in the first round in 2011, I believe, by the Bulls first, and then you get traded to Minnesota, if I'm not mistaken, and then end up with the Miami Heat. I can't the fan in you, not the basketball player, but the fan in you. The biggest story, probably in the last two decades in the NBA, was when LeBron left Cleveland, goes to the Heat, joined you know play. You know, joins powers with Chris Bosh and, and Dwayne Wade. When you found out you were going there, what walk us through that. What's going through your mind? Because, again, the fan, Norris Cole, the fan, not the basketball player, the fan, what was going through your mind? Man, as a fan, it was pandemonium in the house. You know, because, <laughs> you know obviously, um, you know, with, with LeBron being from Ohio, we were, we were LeBron, you know, we still are, you know, LeBron supporters, you know, because he's from Ohio. And, you know, I went to Cleveland State. Um, and then, you know, they were the they were the most watched team. You know, everybody was watching, you know, f- because of the decision that he made. So we were all fans of, you know, the NBA. And so to be able to go to the most watched and the most exciting team in the NBA my first year, you know, to hear my name called, you know, as a basketball fan, you know, it was it was it was great. It was pandemonium in the house. We were all excited. You know, we were all cheering uh, my, my family and teammates. You know, they you know they they were fans of the game fans of you know D Wade fans of you know you know Chris Bosh and LeBron and Pat Riley and all of those things as basketball fans you know it, it, it was great man it was it was great and you had a great career though too i mean you came in i mean you averaged 7 points a game and I, that's i mean people are like, oh seven that's tough to do in the NBA. That's not easy to do in the NBA. And you come in as a rookie and you're getting serious minutes and you're hitting big clutch shots in the NBA finals of, I believe your very first game of that season, your rookie year, you, you go off in the fourth quarter, a huge comeback game against the Celtics. You could play yourself. I know the focus is on the big three, but I think it's the role players. And you see that in the, in the last dance with MJ, MJ was great his entire career, but it took the right pieces around him. And you were a part of those right pieces around LeBron Wade and Bosch to get that done. That was fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, if people don't people who don't know, you know, the Miami Heat are not known for playing young guards. They like to play mm-hmm. seasoned veterans. And so the fact that I had that work ethic and that drive and I earned coach, you know, Coach Foles and I earned our, my teammates, I earned their trust, you know, as a young rookie, as a young player, I, I earned their trust to be able to get out there and show what I can do. You know, and like you said, um, it doesn't seem like it's a lot of points and a lot of assists that I average, but – you know, that team wasn't built around me to do those special things, but I was more than capable of being a special player. And I had I had my chances, you know, during those games to um, go out there and show what I can do. And when it was my opportunity, I took advantage of it. And when it wasn't my opportunity, you know, I was the best team that I could be, and I cheered those guys on. All right. Now you're involved in a couple projects outside of basketball right now. Uh, tell everyone uh, a little bit, and we were talking about this before, the E3EnergyCubes.com. Just talk about that product right now. 
Absolutely. E3 Energy Cube is the best tasting energy fiber protein bars on the market. Um, what, what makes it different is that it's, it's fresh, real ingredients. It's not preservatives or anything like that. It's not sprinkled powder protein or anything. It's real grains, real oats, real berries. Um, it's, it's the best tasting um, fiber protein energy bars on the market. And um, I, I love it. I'm excited about it. And I can't wait, you know, to after quarantine when I can really get out there and continue to push it more. But you can order it now online, e3energycubes.com. And if you uh, if you message me on Instagram, you know, I'll give you uh, the special codes so that you can have the discounts. But go to e3energycubes.com uh, and let me know what you think. Best best tasting, best tasting energy cubes on the market. Awesome. Good stuff. Now, I appreciate you taking time and coming on my podcast here today, uh, but you have a podcast of your own. Again, the Platform Basketball Podcast. You have some fantastic guests. I just saw the one you had with Jamal uh, Jamal Crawford recently, of course, talking The Last Dance. And the story you had with uh, Dwayne Wade about the Porsche, man, that's still one of my favorite stories out there. Absolutely. So make sure you guys go check it out. It's called The Platform Basketball Podcast. You can check it out on Apple Podcasts. You can also check it out on YouTube, the Platform Basketball Podcast. It's it's great dialogue. It's great dialogue. It's about you know the world of sports and you know what's going on in society. Um, we don't focus just on basketball, but basketball is the main topic, obviously, because everyone on the podcast, you know, are professional basketball players or professional trainers, and so we have great dialogue about the game that we love. Um, we want to continue to educate the the next generation. And I'm very, very excited to be one of the hosts. And shout out to my other co-hosts, uh, Chris Johnson, um, Jordan from Swiss Cultures, and uh, Jay Holiday, who's a, who's a player for the Indiana Pacers. All right. Well, Norris, thank you so much. I beyond appreciate your time. We didn't even get all of the great stuff that you do for the community. Uh, we wow. didn't even get to talk about Chris Wright and Daquan and those guys. We'll have to catch up soon and go more on about that. But I love what I love about you is, yes, you're a great career, you're a great athlete, but the way you give back to the community, you continue to chat with our local athletes here and give them advice and wisdom. Uh, that's what I love about you the most. Thank you so much for your time, and we'll talk soon. Man, I appreciate you. And shout out to Daquan Cook. Shout out to Chris Wright. Keep being positive, brothers. Keep doing what you're doing. You guys are special to me. You know that. Shout out to Dayton. All right. Take care, Norris. Thank you, man. No problem. No problem. Thank you. All right, again, uh, this has been 1410 Wing Live right here on Dayton's ESPN radio station and, of course, at wingam.com. I want to thank our sponsor, Arrowhead Tax Service. I appreciate Michael Maxwell and Arrowhead Tax Service jumping on board and helping us bring this to you guys each and every week. If you missed some of this interview, don't worry. You can find it at wingam.com. I'll repost it on my Twitter at 1410Kenner, at ESPN Dayton, and, of course, the ESPN Dayton Facebook page. And we'll also air it on my show later this afternoon, the Justin Kenner Show from 3 to 6 on 1410 Wing AM. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We'll do this again next week. Take care. Have a great weekend. See you next week.